Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you here today as we sit here on WrestleMania weekend. It is Friday morning. We are counting down until WrestleMania. I'm coming to you live from not Orlando, Florida, but from Sacramento, California. Um, this is the first year since WrestleMania 29 I have skipped WrestleMania. Um, and honestly, uh, I was texting with my good buddies Miguel and Rabbi. Um, we were texting yesterday about how it's weird that none of us really miss WrestleMania and the feeling of being in Orlando this year. Um, honestly, when I look at the WrestleMania card, um, WrestleMania to me wasn't that big of an attraction, even if they're trying to make um, you know, WrestleMania looked like it's supposed to be one of the biggest attractions of all year. To me, honestly, when I look at WrestleMania 33's card, it reminds me a lot of what just a normal uh, pay-per-view would be. Honestly, I was more excited for Survivor Series and or Royal Rumble. Um, I'm not going to say that it's bad booking or just whatever. I just think that this year just didn't look that attractive. Um, I will go to Orlando someday, but it will not be to go to wrestling. Um, although, they, you know, there there are a lot of shows going on. Dave Meltzer was saying that if you include the autograph signings and just um, things to do around the town, there's over 100 events um, that you had to pick between in order to plan out your WrestleMania trip. Um, it reminds me a lot of when WrestleMania 29 exploded in New York, um, and they just really had shows going everywhere. Um, you know, this WrestleMania card itself, um, it's, it's got matches. It's got lots and lots and lots of matches. Um, they can't even pick what they're going to be putting onto the pre-show. Um, you know, the, the girls were on there, and now the girls are back on the main card. Um, I think it'll be come down to the last minute decision to see what, uh, where these, uh, these matchups will match up. Um, I can remember, um, you know, when, when we talk about Ravi and Miguel and going on these trips, um, WrestleMania 30, WrestleMania 31, um, you know, basically with me, uh, I'm a cheap guy. If I pay for something, if you can remember WrestleMania 32, I was flipping out that I couldn't even get into the uh, AT&T Stadium last year to see the pre-show. Um, people were talking about Kalisto and Ryback, about how nobody was in attendance in order to watch that match, and that was the opening, opening match last year of the um, Mountain Dew kickoff show. Um, but to me, honestly, that wasn't Ryback's fault. It wasn't Kalisto's fault. That was WWE and or at t Stadium's fault for not letting people into the stands. There was people outside. There was tons of people outside. More people outside than there was inside. People were dying to get into that stadium. And the stadium was not able um, to, you know, process the people uh, and the tickets to get into those seats. Um... I understand they just couldn't just open up the gates and be like, I, I, I bet everybody's got a ticket. Figure it out once you get in there, because then it just would have caused mass chaos um, uh, on the inside. But mass chaos was happening on the outside. I almost fought some big fat guy. Um, but that's a, a story for another day if I haven't already told it itself. Um, I can honestly say that still, the only match that really excites me for WrestleMania um, is Triple H versus um, Seth. Um, I, I want to see how good Seth is when he comes back. I know the Triple H, um, my favorite performer of all time. I know that he's going to have the best match on the show. This will be the best wrestling match. Um, they will tell the best story. I'm hoping that it does not involve, you know, Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, Finn Balor. I hope they just keep the story to Seth versus Triple H because this is honestly a match um, that we, we've been wanting to see. Um, since uh, the days when Seth was in the authority and we thought this match was going to take place um, at WrestleMania 31. Then we thought this match was going to take place at WrestleMania 32. Um, where basically Triple H wanted to protect his investment, but Rollins wanted to show that he was the best and he didn't need all the help, but still um, Triple H put him out there with Corporate Kane, uh, put him out there with um, uh, J&J Security, um, and... Uh, Jamie Noble, and who's the other one? Damn it, I, when I, whenever I think of that in my mind, and my mind's going 100 miles an hour, and I want to say Jamie Kennedy, um, like that comedian guy. Uh, I can never get his name right, but um, damn it, it fucking fucks me up right now. But uh, honestly, you know, Randy and Bray, they might have a good match. Honestly, in my mind, I don't think it's really going to connect with me. Randy winning the championship at another WrestleMania doesn't really excite me. 
Um, Owens versus Jericho to me honestly was something that I was fighting for a couple months ago to be the main event of WrestleMania to involve the uh, Universal Championship. Now that it's going for the United States Championship, this is a match that honestly I don't even think about at all. The build for this match the last three weeks uh, since Owens lost the championship has beyond the point of horrible. Owens has slipped right back into that you know mid-card sort of eh, whatever kind of deal with them you know caring so much about Goldberg uh, as well as Brock Lesnar in the last few weeks on Monday Night Raw. Um, Undertaker versus Reigns is the match that I don't really care about, but I think that's going to be a fucking awesome match. You remember back to WrestleMania 23? Um, with Undertaker going up against Batista, um, they really thought that they deserved to be the main event. Um, even though the, the match that was supposed to take place for the uh, WrestleMania main event of Triple H versus uh, John Cena um, didn't get to happen because Triple H got injured. They replaced him with Shawn Michaels. They ended up having a really good match, Cena and Michaels did. But honestly, there was more heat, there was more build, there was better story to Batista versus Undertaker. And uh, they went out and they threw down. They had a fucking awesome match. And Batista, when he walked through the curtain, he yelled at you know the production crew. He yelled at the fellow wrestlers that were waiting around. Follow that. And he meant it. Because that was a fucking awesome match. Possibly one of the best Batista matches that he's ever had. Possibly one of the best Undertaker WrestleMania matches. Uh, minus the Shawn Michaels and Triple H ones, which are looked at as such, with, with such you know high regard. Batista was a fucking awesome talent. And I'm not saying that, you know, Roman Reigns and Batista are the same dude, but they're going to deliver the same awesome style of match. Roman Reigns, for the people who love him and the people who hate him, he does have great matches on pay-per-view. He doesn't know how to step up to the plate and deliver this guy. He might not be the best wrestler wrestler of the you know, entire WWE, but the guy knows how to wrestle. He knows how to pro wrestling entertainment, whatever he, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. He, he knows how to get that over and uh, deliver a fucking awesome match. Um, as well as the fucking rest of the uh, the, the, the show, um, I, I, like I said earlier, you know, whatever's on the pre-show is on the pre-show, whatever's on the main show is on the main show. Um, I, I don't think a year from now, two, year for, two years from now, we're not really going to remember a lot about this WrestleMania. Um, a lot like WrestleMania 29. Um, it just sort of gets swept under the rug. Every few years they have one that just doesn't really have that appeal. Um, they build until next year and they make sure they blow it out of the park. Um, I can remember when people kept on saying that they had the every other year lull, um, where 27 wasn't that good, 29 wasn't that good, people were saying 31 wasn't gonna be that good. It is what it is. I mean, you take that gamble. You buy those tickets so far in advance. Um, you start making plans for WrestleMania almost a year ahead of time. Um, so, um, we'll have to see. I mean, WrestleMania 30, uh, 34 already has such big, great expectations with it going back to New Orleans so soon. I can honestly tell you that that was the best trip we ever went on, so I'm looking forward to it big time. Uh, other than the rumor out there of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar um, in the main events, there's no way to really predict what's going to be going down on that show. Um, you know, tag teams could break up and they could fight each other at WrestleMania next year or, um, you know, they're, they're going to do things where they shake things up with Monday Night Raw um, and SmackDown and the draft and trades. And I thought we would have at least had a trade by now. All the stuff that they were hyping up with Cesaro um, wanting to be a part of SmackDown, didn't really want to be a part of... Um, uh, Monday Night Raw, they could have done something with that. I know that you know when Foley got fired, it was right before WrestleMania, so you couldn't change things up too much. But how good of it would have been if you know they wouldn't have done Foley getting fired to kick off Raw, and they would have had where basically Foley was trying to escape Stephanie, and Stephanie was looking for Foley, but Foley was doing things throughout the show to fuck with Stephanie because he knew he was getting fired. Like he would trade Cesaro and Sheamus to SmackDown. And basically get nothing back in return. Where he was just screwing them over. Where we know after WrestleMania, that Raw after WrestleMania, they're going to be bringing people up from NXT. They can rebuild the show that way. And, and, and his names could be there. Um, so, you know, there, there's things they could have done. Um, we'll see. I mean, I remember, I remember when they did that... Um, shoot. I can't remember when that was before. If it was before SummerSlam or Survivor Series. They did the State of WWE Address. Um, where they had, you know, Shane, Stephanie, Mick Foley, and Daniel Bryan all sitting down together um, and, and doing a show live on the WWE Network. And I thought that was going to be awesome. 
And I think that it honestly really shit the bed, especially with Foley telling all the stories about how good of a person Stephanie McMahon is. Uh, maybe they were trying to get her baby face at the time because her book was coming out. But um, they'll figure something out. Uh, they'll definitely rebuild. I'm going to pack this in to redoing the full show preview now that they've changed a few matches. Um, like they made the Raw tag team match a ladder match, which people think might could include the Hardys somehow. Um, you know, you've got the New Day doing a thousand skits. Um, you know, Triple H versus um, Seth Rollins was finally announced as a real match. We didn't get to talk about that last week. So we'll rebrand that and stack it all together and um, see what's going on. See you guys down the road. This is one that honestly I fought and decided that this should have been the WWE Universal Championship match. Honestly, in my opinion, I understand why Goldberg and Brock uh, got the higher nod. But honestly, in my opinion, Goldberg versus Brock is that level of dream match um, that uh, WWE used to use on each and every WrestleMania when they first had the brand split where they would put somebody for, from Raw versus SmackDown, whether if it was you know Bobby Lashley versus Umaga, whether if it was... Uh, Shawn Michaels against Kurt Angle. Um, it was sort of you know bringing two guys together that they really worked hard uh, to keep themselves apart. Um, Brock Lesnar being a part of the main roster, you know, working limited dates throughout the year. Goldberg, a guy being brought back out of the past because of his video game commercial was was so popular. Um, but honestly, I think that honestly the championship should always be featured on guys that are going to be on Raw and going to be on SmackDown each and every week. And you know, Kevin Owens. Um, had one hell of a run with the title, um, and and Chris Jericho um, had had one hell of a run being his second banana, the second in charge. Um, he got himself over with the list. Um, they had one hell of a friendship. They caused um, strife, and they they were that group that a lot like Legacy um, back in the day for me kept people watching Raw because of the fact that. Owens went on such a, a long reign with the title, even though a lot of the matches ended uh, via like the, the Hell in the Cell match, where Chris Jericho just came running down, locked himself inside of the cell, and basically made a Hell in the Cell match into a two-on-one handicapped affair. How are you going to win a match like that? Um, you know, they, they, they cheated so bad and so blatant, even one time Jericho running down and punching Kevin Owens in the face, making him get disqualified, and making him the winner where he still kept his championship. Um, things as cheap as that, you know, made it where I'm going to I'm gonna keep watching to the point of I want to see these guys lose because I want to make sure that when they get their asses kicked, I want to see it. Well, it seems that these guys have split up uh, due to the whole corniness of the Carnival of Friendship. I think I got that right, but I think it could have been the Festival of Friendship. Something like that. Um, where basically Kevin Owens didn't want to be looked at as a joke anymore. Um, people are thinking that maybe they're splitting off and going their own directions, where Kevin Owens is going to be picking up the gimmick that he took after SummerSlam and actually becoming a Triple H guy um, with a whole sort of, uh, as you can say, uh, stable of Triple H, um, Samoa Joe, and Kevin Owens. We haven't seen that come to light, but right before Kevin Owens turned on Jericho, um, you know, Triple H had a word with them privately, asking Jericho to take a hike, and um, we'll see if there is anything to play off of there. As of right now, there is no Samoa Joe match, um, so maybe you have, you know, Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn actually getting inserted into this match, uh, where basically um, Triple H sends out Samoa Joe, trying to help Kevin Owens get the win. Um, you know, Sami Zayn, who's been having a, a program with Samoa Joe comes running out to even the odds, and, and we all know that Jericho is going to be taking a little leave of hiatus after WrestleMania. Uh, maybe you play into that whole deal. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, the program that goes all the way back to PWG and Ring of Honor, and them breaking into the business as the tag team together. Um, that That's never going to die, even though before the brand split, um, they made it seem like they were going to different brands, basically saying that they were going to have one last fight um, to, to, to even the odds and say that was it. They even came out with the t-shirt that said fight forever. Um, but, um, you know, fun, fun stuff with this match. It's just a shame that the United States championship has to be sort of an afterthought um, in this whole deal. Um, Roman Reigns won the United States championship. I think he did have a break where he lost it for a minute, but then regained it back. Um, but he, he held it from SummerSlam until WrestleMania. And honestly, like like when I talked about the Intercontinental Championship, where it's like every single time somebody wins these secondhand titles, 
we say this is where they're actually going to put a light on this title. You know, ever since they've done the brand split, um, this is where, you know, they're, we're going to make this title mean something yet once again. Um, to me, honestly, I thought that this match was going to be in the top three matches of WrestleMania because of the fact that the Universal Championship is going to be there. Now, with it only being a United States Championship match, I don't think it's going to get dropped to the pre-show, but I don't think that it's going to have a prominent spot on this year's WrestleMania card, even though these guys were heavily featured in the main event each and every week of Monday Night Raw. This belt has, has made this match sort of unforgettable, or, or I guess you can say forgettable. I think maybe I said that wrong. But um, you know, this should have been a, a much higher deal, and I think that if the United States Championship wasn't featured in this match, it would be higher. Um, I'm going to take Kevin Owens uh, to get the win here. Uh, it's a shame that he has to drop from being United States uh, he has to drop to being the United States champion. But, um, you know, fun stuff should come out of this match. And we'll see what happens at WrestleMania 33. Now we're moving on to the big four matches of WrestleMania 33. This one is going to be AJ Styles going up against Shane McMahon. AJ Styles was pushing and pushing uh, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon to try and put him in the biggest match possible at WrestleMania. Um, he was honestly hosed out of the WrestleMania co-main event. Um, he had wrestled on SmackDown and won countless matches to become the number one contender um, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And every time uh, he won a match, whether if it was a... Um, co-winning the Battle Royal or beating Luke Harper. Um, you know, things kept on coming up where Randy Orton would say, hey, I am uh, the true uh, number one contender because I won the Royal Rumble. Uh, that was forced uh, Randy and AJ to have a match. Uh, Randy Orton came out on top of that match, uh, only for AJ Styles to come into the back, throw the biggest hissy fit in WWE history, getting up into the face of Shane McMahon, um, you know, basically saying that he... Um, was robbed, and, and this is not how you take care of your best superstar on your uh, your best show. And uh, AJ has done everything to put SmackDown in the light of not being the B brand anymore. Um, I think AJ has gone out week after week having great matches, whether it's on television or on pay-per-view or even carrying the house show market, um, showing uh, basically, the WWE messed up uh, a couple of years ago, and they passed on him when TNA let him go. Um, he's proving to the North American market with TNA and WWE that uh, you know he was one of the greatest wrestlers, and for them to pass on him and um, not bring him in, and even have the talk of lowballing him, telling him that you know it's WWE taking a gamble on him. He would have to go to the developmental for two years. You know he busted his ass. He went to New Japan. Uh, quickly became uh, able to be seen as the best wrestler in the world, um, you know, main eventing shows and leading the Bullet Club. Um, I, I think the world of this guy. And uh, honestly, a lot like the John Cena, Miz, Maurice, and Nikki Bella match, this is one that honestly, when I first saw it, I, I groaned about it a little bit. I think that honestly, when it comes down to it, this match needs to tell a story and does not need to go out there and try and be... The you know the quick high flying. Let's see how many spots we can get in in ten minutes. Um, sort of deal. Honestly, in my mind, Undertaker versus Shane McMahon last year at WrestleMania 32 inside of the Hell in the Cell shit the bed. It was not a great match. It was not monumental. It's not something that people want to remember. Honestly, it will not go down as the worst Hell in the Cell match in WrestleMania history. Thank you, Boss Man and the Undertaker. Um, but. It is honestly going to be looked at as more than likely a very, you know, just didn't mean anything match to the show at all. Um, when it comes down to it, I think that um, uh, this match can be very good, but honestly is a very gamble of being something that is just not needed at all. I do like the argument that was made that, you know, when you put um, AJ Styles against Shane McMahon, it does give him... A, a better match um, than, you know, what else was out there. I mean, you know, trying to do some sort of co-branded um, SmackDown versus Raw. You know, you've got um, AJ Styles. You've got um, Samoa Joe. You've got Sami Zayn. You've got a few guys that, as of right now, that are looked at as, as a higher talent than the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But, you know, nothing really that would have... You know, I made a video a while back when it was rumored that they were going to do AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. And one of the reasons why I really wanted to have that match was the comedy for the hardcore fans 
that AJ Styles and Samoa Joe busted their ass in um, developmental. No, well, not developmental. I apologize. I screwed that up. They busted their ass in TNA. TNA's second home is Orlando, where they film their television week in and week out in the Impact Zone. And here they are coming back down for WrestleMania 33 in Orlando in their own backyard. Um, you know, basically TNA gave both of these guys the boot. Samoa Joe honestly did ask for his release, but that was only because, you know, before the beatdown crew, Samoa Joe really wasn't doing anything. And even in the beatdown crew, Samoa Joe was the second banana of that group. And, you know, you go back and you remember that first Bound for Glory challenge um, where um, throughout the tournament, Samoa Joe ended up with negative five points. I don't think he won a match the whole time. And a guy like Samoa Joe is one of their, you know, he was, he was honestly one of the most popular guys, easily one of the best wrestlers they had. And for no apparent reason whatsoever, they just had him lose week after week after week. Um, you know, Samoa Joe is a great champion. Um, he had the great run against Kurt Angle. Maybe one of the things that hurt him more than anything else was Kurt Angle coming into the company and then rushing into the Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle feud. Um, to you know, that did give TNA a boost uh, to lifting them up to where people on the outside were looking in. But honestly, bringing in Kurt Angle. They could have been doing Kurt Angle against anybody and people would have been watching because that's how popular Kurt Angle was at the time and people were so surprised that he did make the jump to be there. Um, I, honestly, you know, Shane and AJ have already done the table spot with Shane McMahon jumping off the top turnbuckle, um, going through the table. So I, I don't know if that means they take that spot away from WrestleMania, but, um, you know, I, it, it sort of leaves it to me is, is what else are they going to be able to do? The backstory... To this whole deal is that before this match was named, Daniel Bryan fired AJ Styles. So as of right now, is AJ Styles a free agent? Is he able to leave? Is he just basically showing up on SmackDown each and every week because of the fact that he's been challenged by Shane McMahon to have a match? Because I haven't really heard anything of Shane telling Daniel Bryan or Daniel Bryan himself pulling that back or maybe even firing. Maybe they'll just say it's it's worked into the contract at the end of doing a contract signing on SmackDown this week um, because this is a, a big match that people are going to be talking about. So, um, you know, it's been talked about for a while that AJ will end up on Monday Night Raw because of how good he really has been doing. And I don't want to say that, that WWE's doubted him, but he's been blowing expectations away. Each and every show, he pushes himself higher and higher up the card. And... Um, he had his championship run. He lost it at the Royal Rumble. I would have loved for them to do John Cena versus AJ um, at uh, WrestleMania. Even do the championship change there, meaning where John Cena took that 16-time um, reign, uh, you know, and tying Ric Flair at WrestleMania, meaning that means something more. Um, definitely Ric could have been there. They had one all of the match at the Royal Rumble. I'm not going to take anything away from them. But uh, maybe they're thinking that you know tying Ric Flair's record is not as great as beating Ric Flair's record. And maybe that'll be WrestleMania 34 after they do the match made in heaven versus the match made in hell. Where, you know, John can get married to Nikki and on the same card, you know, get the 17-time championship. Before taking off and go doing this pistachio um, commercials and, um, you know, the movies and television shows and... All that other stuff. So we'll see with this one. Definitely it deserves to be in that top four spot. But this is one that could really, you know, break the mold for WrestleMania moments. Or it could be honestly really one that just WrestleMania letdowns that just didn't give us what we were looking for. All right. Here we are. This is my main event. This is the biggest match of WrestleMania. Triple H versus Seth Rollins. This is honestly a match that we've been waiting for, I believe, two years it was rumored that it was going to take place at a Survivor Series. It was rumored that it was going to take place at WrestleMania 31. It was rumored that it was going to take place at WrestleMania 32. And we never got a chance to see it, but it was always in the back of our minds. Is This is a match that we wanted to see. We wanted to see the breakup of the authority. We wanted to see the guy that was talked into leaving the Shield and joining up with Triple H turn on that man and show that he was the man and deserved to be the number one guy in WWE. Triple H constantly stacked the deck with Ron Rollins as champion. Um, but even as a heel champion, Rollins fought against Triple H, saying that he didn't want the protection. He didn't want J&J security. He didn't want Kane. Uh, he didn't want the big show. He wanted to go out and wrestle these guys one-on-one. -on -one. 
He wanted to be able to show that he was the future, the, 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 the building blocks of WWE's future. The main event of WrestleMania 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. He wanted to show that he had something to bring to the table and he was going to be the man. That is all Rollins has ever wanted to be ever since he stepped foot in a WWE ring. The man. Uh, he always took, you know, outlandish, um, huge spots in the Shield matches to really show that he wanted to break out for being a part of those three guys and be one of the guys that people really remember. Um, when the Shield debuted um, on that Survivor Series show, when they came out and took out Ryback and helped uh, CM Punk, um, you know, people immediately took the Seth Rollins because of him being Tyler Brock and Ring of Honor. People immediately took the Dean Ambrose because of his past in the Indies. Roman Reigns is a guy that they saw on NXT, but sort of thought that maybe he was a man of mystery that they didn't really know what it was supposed to be. Um, you know, the Shield kept on going and going, winning and winning, uh, having big matches. Uh, you know, when um, after payback, when uh, Rollins uh, turned uh, on the Shield and joined up with Triple H, um, you know, he'd go on to win the Money in the Bank. He would go on to hold that Money in the Bank forever. He would go on and be capture the title at WrestleMania. Um, his career kept on growing and growing. And then last year, um, as the champion before um, Survivor Series, it's been debated if he was going to lose that title uh, to Roman Reigns or not. I honestly thought he was going to lose that match. But before it could happen, he blew out his knee in a match against Corporate Kane. I think that match happened like in Germany or something like that. Everyone's seen the video, um, whether if you saw it online when it first happened, or you saw the WWE 24, or... Rollins doesn't have a DVD yet. Rollins doesn't have a DVD. It's coming soon, though. I'm pretty sure that we'll get one. Um, but, you know, that was basically, you know, Rollins in a nutshell. He came back. Um, he won the championship, lost the championship. Um, it was getting built up in, the, in, in that attack that was leading towards, uh, I believe, him versus Samoa Joe at Fastlane and then him versus Triple H at WrestleMania. His knee got blown out again, and people didn't think that we were ever going to, to, to get this match. Um, this is the one match that, honestly, I care more about than anything else on the card. And I can honestly tell you that last week, maybe it's because there were so many matches on the show, and I did so many videos in the course of two days to talk about every match on WrestleMania. I didn't even realize that I didn't even talk about it, because WWE because didn't have it up on the show pa uh, pa uh, WrestleMania show page because it hadn't been announced as a match, because they had signed the... The contract, because uh, in storyline, Triple H doesn't want himself and or WWE uh, to be hurt with a lawsuit because Triple H really believes that he's going to take Seth Rollins out and he's really going to injure him. Um, this is going to be a good match. I mean, this is going to be a fucking awesome match where they beat the hell out of each other. Um, I could easily see, you know, uh, Samoa Joe uh, being involved in this match, maybe even Finn Balor being involved in this match. I can honestly beg that they just lead this to a one-on-one. -on -one. I've been waiting for this match for so long um, that I think that you know, the two of them can really go out there and have an awesome match. Uh, to me, um, WrestleMania 26, Triple H versus Sheamus, that was a great match. Didn't really have the, the biggest storyline of all time. Didn't really think that that would be the last uh, time Triple H competed at WrestleMania as a full-time competitor. Um, but of course, then he would leave. Um, he would start taking the, the office job more serious. Um, he would come back at 27, 28, um, have awesome matches with The Undertaker. You can debate against, you know, whether if the Triple H versus Brock match at WrestleMania 29 was good or not, especially debated the fact that Triple H should have beat him. Um, that's the match that I even forget that Brock, when I think of the Brock Lesnar losses in WWE, I, I don't really count that one that much. I, I can remember the Goldberg one. I can remember um, the Undertaker one. I can remember the, the John Cena one. Um, but even the Rollins cash in, you sort of count that. I mean, I guess he's only lost five matches in WWE. Got eliminated from the Rumble. Count that one. Um, but uh, there were 30. The match against Daniel Bryan was was the match of the night, even though it was the first match and wasn't the match that Bryan won the championship. When I think about Bryan and 30 winning the championship, I think about the Triple H match. Um, 31, uh, the match against Sting. It was cool. It was smoke and mirrors. It was the the Monday Night Wars with NWO versus DX. There was more to it, but that was still um, one of the matches that I remember. Uh, WrestleMania 32, Triple H against Roman in the main event. 
it was possibly my last time ever seeing Triple H wrestle in the main event. So that's one thing I remember. So we all know that Triple H knows how to wrestle. We all know the Rollins knows how to wrestle. They're going to come together. Um, with them being involved with, with each other for so long, we know that it's going to deliver be an awesome match. Um, I love Triple H. If I never see him win another match, I'll understand and I'll be happy. I'm picking Rollins to win this one. And um, hopefully get that career started and hopefully no injuries between WrestleMania 33 and WrestleMania 34. I would love to see Rollins be, be one of the guys who wrestles in the main event next year. Um, not really hyped about Brock versus um, Roman. Um, we all know that Roman versus Seth will always have a, uh, a chemistry. Um, they'll always have you know that story behind them uh, because of everything that they've uh, been involved with, with the Shield and coming up through NXT together. Um, but to me, honestly, I know people really want to see. Um, they, they, well, they finally got it this year at uh, Battleground, I think it was. Um, the three way of the Shield with Rollins, Ambrose, and um, Reigns um, to see who is going to be the champion heading into the draft. Um, or maybe it was after the draft. I can't remember. Because I remember that um, Ambrose um, celebrated with um, Shane McMahon after he won that. So he was already a part of SmackDown. So however that works out. But, um, you know, I think that honestly, if I wanted to pick what my WrestleMania main event would be next year, I think I would want Reigns versus Rollins. Even though people will, oh, boo, Roman Reigns. Um, I think that might be one of the biggest ones with actual people that have their foot stuck in the ground in WWE that aren't going to be leaving. Um, you know, there's, I know it's not involved in John Cena, it's not involved in The Rock, but to me, honestly, the guys who are going to be wrestling on house shows, the guys that are going to be on Raw, the guys that are going to be on SmackDown, the guys that are going to be there from January all the way until December, I think that's, those are the two best homegrown guys that WWE has the main event WrestleMania next year. So um, I got Rollins winning this one, and hopefully Rollins staying injury-free and having a great year this year. This is one that, honestly, if you go back and watch my WrestleMania 33 predictions video, um, where I read the current card that people were saying that they were going to do, after it first came out that they were going to do this mixed tag between John Cena, Nikki Bella, against Miz and Maurice, I crapped all over this match, saying that this was stupid, it was, it was a bad way to bring um, you know, the reality of Total Bellas and Total Divas into WWE and use it on the main stage of WrestleMania. I know that honestly, sometimes with some Divas matches, mostly like Natalia um, chasing the uh, Divas Championship and, and things like that, and Nikki Bella's title run, it almost seemed like Total Bellas and Total Divas was using WWE television to sort of write their show. This one right here makes it seem that WrestleMania is being told what to do by E! Entertainment. Um, that this is the match that they want to have. I can honestly tell you that, you know, Miz, uh, other than going after the um, WWE um, World Heavyweight Championship um, for, um, you know, the, the belt that's held by Bray Wyatt, this honestly is the best way to go after and use his talents that he's given to us this year. Miz needed to be rewarded with a huge match. Honestly, there's people that crap all over Miz's um, 2010 um, WWE Championship run where he main evented WrestleMania 27. He became a, an afterthought of Rock versus Cena, building up WrestleMania 28. But honestly, to me, I think Miz was awesome during that run. And I understand that, you know, when most guys... They have their run with the championship. They got to be, you know, sort of have the gas taken off them a little bit. Um, because new, fresh guys, especially at that time when they only had one championship belt, they need to be, you know, sort of, um, you know, brought back and, 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 you know, mixed around and things like that. Miz honestly felt like he fell further and further down the card. He became an intercontinental champion. They put Ric Flair with them. Um, you know, they, they tried gimmick after gimmick. They gave him Damian Sandow and made him in a, into a tag team. Um, and, and he was always entertaining. Um, but honestly, the way that Miz has turned this Hollywood gimmick into being like, you know, sort of a, a straight out shoot that he is a real um, wrestler, that he's entertaining. He is everything that WWE asks him to be, but they're not giving him the right things. Putting Miz against John Cena is almost the same way that they're saying that the AJ 
versus Shane McMahon match is the best way to congratulate AJ and put him into a high caliber match. I honestly wouldn't have turned down seeing AJ versus John Cena yet once again, even if it is the fourth time we've seen it in a calendar year, because of the fact that it is on the WrestleMania stage and special things happen. Um, when, when, when guys have great matches at WrestleMania and it's matches that people honestly really want to remember. Um, but I, I give it up to Miz. This is honestly the biggest match that they can put him in. He's not going to win it. Um, but, um, you know, this is, this is something that we honestly can get something out of him that is very, very entertaining. Like, like, um, them spoofing Total Bellas and Total Divas, um, you know, with having Miz dress up like John Cena, having uh, Maurice dress up like Nikki Bella, um, we even have Tyler Breeze running around like, like, uh, Nikki Bella, um, but really, really fun stuff here, um, you know, the, the, the stuff that Miz has been spitting about John, um, is, is honestly the truth, and, um, it's a lot of behind the stage, behind, uh, the scenes sort of things where we've seen Nikki Bella, um, honestly go out and, and people are like Carmella are delivering promos against her. She's basically said that, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter what you say, as long as people remember it and people think it's real, you know, that's where the money's at. That's where people are going to believe, uh, that we're crossing the lines of what is WWE and, and what is real life. And, and that is what's going on into here. Definitely Nikki and John, you know, they don't care um, what people have to say about them, just as long as they can go out and have a very entertaining match. Um, the question mark about this match is Maurice. Maurice honestly hasn't had a match since I can honestly guess um, 2010 when she was the Divas Champion on SmackDown. I always thought that Maurice was honestly a very entertaining, very good um, wrestler in the Divas thing. And then all of a sudden one day she was on Raw. She did the head flip um, when she got into the ring. Somehow that made her faint. I don't know if she suffered a concussion from whipping her head around or wherever it was, but I always thought she was a good wrestler. And I know that wrestling has has changed in the women's division now. They're not now they're not divas anymore, um, and they they have a more real, I guess you can say, style of wrestling. But I, I I know that she still knows how to do it. I mean that that's what she was trained for. I think she came from deep south. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure if she went to FCW or not. I think she debuted on the main roster before they had moved there, but I could be, I could be wrong. Um, but, um, this honestly is, is going to be a barn burner. Um, the whole deal where we discuss, you know, is John going to, um, propose to Nikki once the match is over? It makes sense. Um, if it is going to happen, it's very funny. If you actually go to the, um, listing on WWE.com under WrestleMania.com for this match, and read the, like, I guess you can say the, the Facebook comment section at the very bottom. There's people who are debating about John debating to Nikki if it's going to happen or not. And this is, these are real life wrestling fans um, that are honestly debating about if this is the right way to John to, for John to do it. Um, you know, getting engaged is not a very public uh, thing to do. It's supposed to be a very intimate, private thing. And here they are. They're going to be doing it on WrestleMania, which millions of people are going to be watching, as well as showing it to a million people on Total Divas as well. Um, uh, honestly, who knows about Nikki and John? What's real? What's fake? The whole Total Divas thing is that we've been building it up for however many seasons this show has been going on. I, I, I'm going to guess it's been going on for four I think it debuted around SummerSlam 2013, but it could have been 14. Um, I know that um, you know John the whole time kept telling Nikki that he wanted her to move in. They wanted us to have a life together, but John was not looking to get married. John was not looking to have children, and that was something that Nikki really wanted to do. Sometimes it's actually been a uh, a line in the sand that that needed to be discussed. That was the whole. Um, ending point of season one is that, you know, was Nikki going to break up with John over the fact that this is going to happen? Um, who knows? John could become one of those guys that, you know, they get engaged and just think that is something that's going to keep a placehold on the relationship and still is, is thinking that maybe this is something that'll make her happy, but is never looking to actually set the date um, and, and have them get married. Who knows? They could get married at WrestleMania 34. They could do a whole play on the SummerSlam 1991. The match made in heaven and the match made in hell where John has to compete in a match against Dolph Ziggler. And if, if John wins the match, then John can actually go through with the wedding on the same show. I think that would be a very fun, very entertaining way to bring up the whole Dolph Ziggler versus Nikki deal on Total Bellas and Total Divas that we never got to see play into real life, even though we did see 
Um, Dolph Ziggler super kicked John, and then all of a sudden, it just went away, and they never talked about it ever again. But um, Miz has honestly had one hell of a year. Um, he deserves this. I'm looking forward to him climbing, climbing the ranks um, and, and getting more um, for what he's doing because he's knocking out of the park with each and everything they've had him do. Um, hopefully this match against John can reunite him, get him back into the championship picture um, when Randy uh, beats Bray um, and, and needs somebody to go against because it was um, Randy who got beat by Miz uh, when Miz cashed in uh, to win that first championship. I don't know. Was it? Fuck, I think it was. Yeah, because it was Randy against Wade on Monday Night Raw. The Nexus ran in. John ran the Nexus off. So then basically it was just straight up one-on-one -on -one for Miz to come down and cash in. There was nobody left to interfere in the match. So um, fun stuff. Um, we'll see what goes down with this one. But I'm taking the money on John and Nikki to get the win. And then I'll take the, the, the smart money uh, by doubling down and putting uh, John to uh, ask Nikki uh, to marry him. And then hopefully... We get the yes. I, I don't know what they could do to make a turn off of Nikki, but um, you, know, you know, people out there are actually thinking that it might happen. All right, let's get down to it. Let's see whose yard it really is. This one is going to be The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns honestly is the WWE's number one big star in their own eye, no matter who uh, has anything to say about it. If you listen to Monday Night Raw, if you listen to pay-per-view crowds, People love to boo Roman Reigns. WWE will always answer back saying that you should be on the local house shows um, where basically there's always a loud cheer of fans uh, for Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns always is, seems to be one of the most over guys there is. They had a huge opportunity putting him up against the largest legend inside WWE that seems to come back each and every year bigger better and stronger than ever in The Undertaker. I don't think there's one fan in Orlando that will be booing Undertaker uh, come WrestleMania Sunday. Uh, honestly, to me, Roman Reigns, ever since you know the fans have really turned on him, basically saying that uh, Roman went through a long change uh, of WWE shoving him down our throats, making it seem that he was the biggest and bettest guy of them all. To me, honestly, I'm not sure what... Um, really put fans over the edge. But to me, when, when I think most fans noticed was the CM Punk interview um, on The Art of Wrestling with Cole Cabana um, where CM Punk told the story of the TLC match of the three-on-one, The Shield versus CM Punk, um, where agents really wouldn't tell CM Punk what they wanted him to do in the match other than make Roman Reigns look strong. And CM Punk kept coming with the answer, why not just let him beat me? There's three of them and one of me. He was openly asking to lose the match because that made more sense than anything. Why not just let him win? Um, that pay-per-view was a really weird pay-per-view. If you go back and remember, there's two separate um, handicap three-on-one matches. I believe Daniel Bryan took on the Wyatts three-on-one on that show where basically um, the buildup was that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan were being a short-lived tag team um, going against uh, people on uh, on uh, Monday Night Raw. Um, and the only way to even the odds and keep them shut up was to do the three-on-ones. Um, Daniel Bryan lost his. Uh, CM Punk won his. Um, and I think that was one of the moments where everybody just sort of said, what the fuck? This doesn't make any sense, and uh, just boo from there on out. Um, we don't really have a hard-on stipulation for this match, but uh, uh, but uh, Roman Reigns said in his promo two weeks ago that he was going to beat Undertaker to the point where Undertaker retired. Um, I don't know if that's a metaphor of uh, basically just saying that um, you know Undertaker, who only has lost at WrestleMania once, being WrestleMania 30 against Brock Lesnar, um, is going to be so humiliated that he won't want to come back, and this will transfer the yard um, from Undertaker to Roman Reigns. Uh, to me, honestly, this is a very old um, uh, sort of saying that Undertaker used to have. I mean, I think he was saying this back in 2001 and 2002 when he was still... Uh, Undertaker the Biker. I, I can't really think of him calling this his yard since then. So whoever pitched this in the writing room um, has probably honestly been there for a long time or just 
They, they, you know, Vince is saying, I want to do Undertaker versus Roman. And nobody in the room had, you know, a saying of what they wanted this match to be built around and why these guys were going to come together. Um, to me, honestly, Roman being able to just go on full on heel um, would have made a whole lot of sense here. Um, it's not like anybody was really clamoring for the Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman matches that happened on Monday Night Raw and at Fastlane. Um, but, you know, it doesn't make any sense, especially for the push of Braun Strowman. Braun is a guy that has been, you know, beating guys mercifully left and right. He did not lose on Monday Night Raw the second time, but uh, he definitely was being set up to lose before Undertaker come out. Um, this this week on uh, Monday Night Raw, definitely we're going to be getting some sort of a, a face-to-face. They're probably not going to have them touch in WWE's um Put, uh, you know the last show before WrestleMania, the go home show. Um, you know, sort of tradition of not really giving anything away for free, making you want to see WrestleMania. But Undertaker is taking a spear. Um, you know, Roman Reigns is taking the choke slam. Um, it's hard to pick against Undertaker at WrestleMania. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where he's already lost the streak, so it's not there. If you go back and you watch my WrestleMania 32 predictions, I'm sure that I predicted Undertaker to lose the match against Shane because it was Shane. But because this is Roman Reigns, because this is The Undertaker, I can't pick against Taker in this match at WrestleMania. It makes more sense um, for Undertaker to beat Roman. Um, you know, he's sort of, once it's all said and done, extend the hand. Uh, Roman, Reign, uh, Roman Reigns in defeat um, be able to take the, um, the gesture from Undertaker as a sign of respect, knowing that Taker's not going to be around. Um, you know, we didn't see him as much as we saw him last year. Um, we saw him show up on SmackDown. Uh, we saw him a few Raw appearances, but, uh, you know, it's not like he was doing the whole Brock Lesnar tour like he was doing a few years ago with the SummerSlam match in, um, in, in New York, um, the Hell in a Cell in L.A., and then I think that Survivor Series was in Atlanta, but I'm not quite sure. But, um, you know, uh, if, if they do the handshake deal... I think it's sort of cheap that they that they if they do the heel turn there where Roman would sort of do the Chris Jericho WrestleMania 19 thing and just sort of kick Undertaker in the nuts. Um, they could do that, but to me, honestly, if they wanted to get this match more over, it would make more sense that they would have done the heel turn on the way, um, so that way he could have beat Undertaker and then taken the the rub um, for beating Undertaker and moving that forward. Um, into uh, the next few pay-per-views and uh, making him the biggest, baddest dude on the block. Um, it could go either way, um, but I'm picking Undertaker uh, to get the win here um, and uh, show the sign of respect uh, to Roman and, and WWE, hoping that is what's going to take for get, the, get him over with the fans. All right, this one is going to be the main event of the evening. WrestleMania 33's main event is going to be the Universal Champion Goldberg going up against Brock Lesnar. And here we are. We're probably going to talk about this match longer than this match is actually going to happen inside of the ring. WrestleMania 20's event, um, they honestly had a, a good style match. I want to say that it went about 10 minutes. I haven't watched it, honestly, in a really long time. But in that match, uh, basically it's very famous because of the fact that crowds in Madison Square Garden turned on this match huge. Nobody wanted to see this. It was well publicized um, in mainstream news as well as wrestling news that Brock Lesnar was leaving WWE due to the fact that he didn't like the travel and felt that he could maybe make it playing professional football and had an open invitation from the Minnesota Vikings head coach Mike Tice at the time to try and play on the line for the Vikings. He went to open tryouts. Um, he did not make the team, but honestly did um, stay with the team longer um, than many people thought he was going to make it. Um, from there, um, Brock went back to, to wrestling as well as, I believe, trying to, to get into professional boxing before settling down on MMA, which then launched him into UFC, which then brought him back to WWE. Um, Goldberg's uh, line basically was uh, the day that uh, WCW closed. He was called by Time Warner and offered um, a buyout on his contract, where I believe they offered him less than 50% 
of his deal where he basically told Time Warner over the phone to go fuck themselves. Um, Goldberg would wait until the deal finally ended up and then signed a, a one-year contract to work for WWE under the understanding that he would be having a lot of wrestling matches with The Rock. Um, you know, The Rock came in, they did the, the one match right off the bat, which in, ended up being the only match that they would have. Um, because at the time, Rock was splitting time between WWE as well as making movies in Hollywood. Rock's career really started to take off, and um, Rock wasn't seen um, that year until WrestleMania when he came back to do the match, him and Mick Foley against the members of Evolution minus Triple H. Um, Goldberg's year um, in WWE without The Rock um, basically was not what he thought it was going to be out to be. Um, he battled Triple H, um, you know, on screen and off screen, as well as Vince McMahon to the point where the contract was over. It wasn't even negotiated if Goldberg would come back again. WWE didn't want to have Goldberg. Goldberg didn't want to have WWE. And they both went their separate ways. Um, Goldberg, of course, would live on making uh, television shows about, you know, cars, I believe, for the Speed Channel, uh, as well as uh, a podcast for Podcast One, where I don't even know if he still makes it anymore. I can honestly tell you that uh, I know I don't hear commercials for it. I don't hear hype about it. All that I know is that the, the people who gave it a chance um, basically were hoping that Goldberg was going to talk about wrestling, and he never talked about wrestling. It was almost like for Goldberg, it was a sore subject that nobody uh, wanted to bring up, um, but uh, there was always that rumor that would pop up that Goldberg was wanting to wrestle one more match uh, to be able to show his kids what he had done, um, you know, what made him famous, and basically what was paying the bills. Um, Goldberg always did, you know, autograph shows uh, where he would reach out to the fans, and he was always a really nice guy. To the people who showed him respect, he would show them respect back. Uh, much like Bully Ray is, if you've ever met Bully Ray at a WrestleCon event or any um, sort of autograph signing or something like that. Um, you know, Goldberg is a guy that knows, you know, what butter is bread. And for him to go to those autograph signings, he made a lot of money to do those. And for the people that wanted to pay and be a part of them, he always uh, treated them with a lot of respect back. Um, you know, Goldberg um, got the chance to do the video game commercial, and then from the huge video response uh, to the, the, the video, um, you know, Vince realized it might be time to bring him back. And when they brought him back, um, it was a lot bigger than I think WWE even thought it was going to be. They thought that maybe this would be something that they could build Survivor Series around as a one-off. Well, the one-off ended up being, you know... Uh, Let's see, he did the he he, he did the uh, the rumble. Um, he did uh, roadblock. Did he do roadblock or did he fast lane to get those ones mixed up? Uh, but you know, then he ended up coming back and doing this WrestleMania match. This is this is the one match that I honestly thought that he was going to do. I didn't think we were going to get the other ones. I thought that they would sort of you know bring him back on Raw and they would build up to the point where they would do the WrestleMania match because WrestleMania is always where the money's been, but. For the WWE to be smart and, and to put the Goldberg on those other shows, um, it sort of gives those other shows a little bit of meaning um, for the people that really want to see Goldberg. Uh, I've never really been the biggest fan of his. Um, I don't even like him being champion right now for the same reason that I don't like Brock Lesnar being champion. I, I don't like being one of those guys that says WWE House Shows has to have a championship match. But honestly, I love WWE House Shows. And even though I didn't miss out on going to a house show without a championship match. I know that they build everyone as being stars and anybody can main event a show, but when the title's there, it makes it seem like it's a big deal to me. Um, but, uh, you know, for a WrestleMania main event, I don't think this is going to be one that people really remember as, you know, oh, good old WrestleMania 33, Goldberg versus Brock, the year of 2017. It's, it's going to be one that is honestly skipped over in the history of time. WrestleMania 27 was a good main event. People don't talk about Cena versus uh, um, Cena versus The Miz. It just it is, it is what it is. I think that Goldberg is going to lose this match. I think that honestly, if, if WWE and Goldberg uh, break off um, their, their current deal right now, I don't want to say that they're, they're going to be losing money, but I think that honestly, 
they got to find something for Goldberg to do. I don't really want to see him as the guest GM um, of Monday Night Raw. Um, I, I, I don't think that Goldberg would even want to do that. I, I don't think he wants to be on Monday Night Raw week in and week out now that Mick Foley is fired. But, um, and, and I don't really want him to have to come back, you know, six months from now and have a match like Sting did after WrestleMania 31 where he wrestled against Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship. We've already seen him be champion. Um, I, I don't really know how you build Goldberg as having a dream match, but, you know, that's why they have creative. I, I would love to see Goldberg come back, um, you know, maybe after SummerSlam um, and, and maybe bring some hype uh, to the after um, SummerSlam lull that they go into with Night of Champions and Hell in the Cell. Uh, and basically where they just run out of gas uh, come TLC in December and they're just just hoping for the Royal Rumble to come along and give people that, that glimpse that WrestleMania is right around the corner. So I'm picking Brock in this one. Um, you know, Brock you know, finally got some offense, you know, after losing um, at Survivor Series and then you know, being thrown out and eliminated at the Royal Rumble. Um, you know, he's been able to, to, to hit the F5. We haven't seen um, Goldberg do anything since then. Um, they are going to be having the face-to-face, -face, but in you know WrestleMania go-home shows uh, history, we've never seen guys touch in a long, long time. So I'm guessing these guys are just going to look at each other. They'll have the huge row of security making sure that these guys don't get anywhere near each other. Uh, we've already seen this now that I think about it before the Survivor Series where people thought that Goldberg actually got hurt wrestling against the extras, but... Um, that's why the match lasted so short, but eight minutes here. We'll see if the match goes longer than this. I'm hoping that this is about how long it, it goes, about an eight-minute match at WrestleMania, and um, we'll see what goes down. I'm picking, uh, I'm picking Brock and taking the money. For some reason here, WWE actually has Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship as the big one, the, the main event of WrestleMania 33. This is the... the Highest built match on the card. Uh, I do not think that this will main event the show. I think this will be somewhere tucked down in between. I don't know if maybe they think of the WWE Championship still as being the number one belt in the company, seeing how the Universal title was just named, uh, even though it's on Monday Night Raw, just after SummerSlam. I wouldn't be surprised if, if somewhere the belts get swapped, a lot like in the draft when Batista and John Cena were, were flip-flopped. Uh, and basically the um, WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight title switched um, back in, I guess that would be 2005, maybe 2006, somewhere somewhere in the lineage back then. But, um, you know, this match to me honestly has a big, you know, just question mark after question mark. I guess this is the ultimate swerve Vince Russo style storyline that, uh, you know, I sort of had thought that WWE had put behind them. But um, you have to go back to the uh, fall um, back before No Mercy 2016 when Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton first started feuding. Honestly, I don't even remember what started this feud, um, but what seemed like it was just going to be another match on the No Mercy 2016 show ended up being the main eventer after as, as um, what was put, passed around uh, throughout the uh, wrestling news sites was because of the fact that they were doing a presidential debate um, and, and WWE felt that people weren't going to want to watch um, the No Mercy show. They decided that they were going to push the main event to being the first match of the show, um, putting John Cena versus Dean Ambrose um, versus uh, AJ Styles for the WWE Championship as the first match, uh, and then just sort of you know play on the rest of the show from there. They, they said that was the main event, even though it was the first match, um, and gave John Cena credit um, when he broke the record for most main events in, in WWE history or whatever it was. But, you know, to me, honestly, the main event is what closes out the show and sends you thinking, I wonder what's going to happen on SmackDown. Um, in that match, Luke Harper returned, uh, costing um, Bray Wyatt uh, um, to, to, to win the match over Randy Orton. Um, Randy controlled most of the match, um, but, but just didn't come out uh, as the winner there. Um, and then, you know, they go out of that show, they, they do a series of matchups where it's Randy Orton and Kane going up against Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt out of the middle of nowhere. Um, Randy Orton hits Kane with an RKO uh, and joins up with the Wyatts. Um, it's still never been revealed, um, but I, I, I was sort of kept thinking that when it came down to it in the end, that Randy 
and Luke were both in this together. Um, seeing how they both popped up around No Mercy back then. Um, but, you know, since then we've seen Randy and Luke Harper fight. And I, I, I guess that wasn't just them, them play fighting and going back and forth at it. They were, they were really going. And it was only Randy who had the uh, uh, master plan, I guess you can say, to take down Bray Wyatt um, by, by burning down the house. And that's what happened is they won the tag team championships. And after losing them, everyone was entered into the Royal Rumble where Randy Orton came out on top. Um, for me... As soon as Randy won the match, the announcers were talking about the fact that Randy Orton had been freed. Uh, he was no longer under the spell of the Wyatts. And, um, you know, they kept going with the storyline, with Randy showing up on SmackDown.